Okay, so next we have Alalita uh, talking about considerations uh, for your infrastructure cost monitoring. All right, thanks, Richard. Hi, everyone. I know that I am holding you back between lightning talks and my talk, but thank you, everyone, for your patience. Um, I am going to dig into observability considerations for cost, uh, cloud cost optimizations today. Uh, a little bit about myself. I'm Alalita Sharma. I uh, am a co-chair for the observability group, a tag group in the CNCF. Uh, I also work on open telemetry, and I'm on the governance committee of the open telemetry project that you've been hearing all about. And uh, I also lead AIML observability at Apple. So with that said, uh, I'd like to ask folks... How many of you are users of cloud infrastructure? I'm, I'm guessing many folks. All right, so this is, this is something that I think is near and dear to many of our hearts, both from a using user perspective as well as from a vendor perspective. And what I wanted to do today was um, kind of have a uh, discussion oriented um, talk. I know we ran out of, uh, we are short on time a bit, but I, what I did want to call out is that there is an, uh, there have been some talks on FinOps today, earlier in the day, and as many of you, you know, work on cloud infrastructure as well as building applications on cloud infrastructure, most enterprises, big or small, leverage cloud infrastructure today for running global applications, right? Whether that's services or whether that is, you know, middleware services or being able to provide data to your, you know, applications. So um, cloud infrastructure kind of forms the baseline for all the scalability, reliability, and the performance that we look at from a systems point of view. We use observability, as many of you are here today, to be able to understand system behavior well and also be able to understand health of the service end-to-end, -end, both of the application as well as the infrastructure layer, real-time. Because there are many things, you know, many implementations that have been done over time which are um, not really real-time, right? They have, we aggregate data, we look at data, you know, uh, for days, we uh, go and uh, often also um, go and really analyze post collection. But in this case, I'm talking about real time observability. And as time goes by, we operate you know very large services at scale, and operational planning, as well as running cloud based applications, cannot be done without real time observability. Right? both on the infrastructure as well as the application layer. So observability, you know, again, helps us build operational resilience. Many of us you know, are looking at resilience at different layers. How do we provide HA and high availability across zones, across regions, across you know, different uh, configurations, uh, scalability? as well as performance of applications, right? So again, all of these areas go lockstep, and many of us sitting here you know, are very familiar with the details of how to operate such large-scale systems. So enter a new area that is intersecting with the observability space. It has been intersecting for a while, but I think that even today, it's far more pronounced and has really grown uh, in and evolved in the space of observability, where you see a lot of the financial planning, the forecasting, the analysis of understanding public cloud costs has become more and more of a scenario and a use case for observability, right? Because here we are, we're coming from the systems world, we think and breathe systems, but you know, here we are also now thinking about how does that intersect into cost both from an engineering perspective as well as from a financial perspective. 
So t today what I want to do is focus this talk on really, you know, thinking about how observability intersects and what are some of the underpinnings that observability is now providing for financial planning. I do think that in today's world, at the scale that which we operate at, you know, our services globally, operational and financial planning needs to happen lockstep. That is, you cannot, you know, really th not think about financial planning at the same time that you operate your services. This also means that public cloud providers, who are an integral part of the fabric of the services that are being run, are also key stakeholders and need to provide you know, cost-effective services which really scale at the, you know, uh, on demand for the user. So I want you to kind of think about the different stakeholders in the, in the equation, right? When you say that you have um, the operations and the operating of the systems, the design of systems, we're all familiar with about that as engineers. But then you also have the CFO's office, the financial teams coming in and knocking on your door and saying that, hey, you know, it's like, how much is this stuff costing? And why are we getting all these, you know, massive bills when we really don't have the kind of breakdown that we should have, right? Like, you know, any cloud provider that you're using, does it, do, do they give you what you need? And that's a good question to ask. So if you don't have observability data today, right, fully instrumented, fully collected for all your application services as well as all your infrastructure, are you first, first question to ask is that are you, is your cloud cost analysis and financial planning really, you know, being able to leverage the cloud uh, resource usage data that you're getting from your cloud providers? You know, and cloud providers can be public cloud, you could be running hybrid infrastructure, you could be running all different kinds of configurations, but you really have to question, is the data that you're getting for usage information of resources really adequate, right? The other part really is that is your provider providing you enough data, granular enough, or you know, additional organizational detail that you may need to be able to you know, clearly account for that cost into projects or into different domains or different users or different cost centers. Again, there's a lot of complexity that goes into the financial space. So often, uh, what, you know, is, uh, what ends up happening is that financial planning becomes very much of a guess guesstimate, right? because you really don't have the kind of you know, detail that you would need to have you know, for resource usage as well as other you know, dimensions. And it really becomes an guesstimate analysis which you know, leads to, very quickly can lead to unmanaged cloud costs, to inefficiency in the way you run your systems, in the way you configure your uh, infrastructure uh, waste, and hence organizational overspend. Because if you don't have visibility, which is what observability is all about, then how do you actually get to the next step? And often, you know, it is actually many teams just getting up and trying to pull data together, you know, post uh, occurrence of, you know, this usage and trying to combine, compile that information back together. So fast forward to observability and what, you know, if you do have the data, you know, in a perfect world where you have all the instrumentation, you have the data, you have your infrastructure, you know, being able to emit the kind of detail of granular data and the types of data that you need to have for your infrastructure as well as for your applications, observ observability becomes very useful because you can take your resource data, usage data, you can take your real-time telemetry data collection, uh, apply correlation, apply ML trend analysis, that's where ML is becoming more and more useful. And I'm not talking about buzzwords here, it is actually very useful at scale. Um, and the results in you know, very accurate, very granular, uh, data-driven understanding of resource utilization and spend patterns that your organization may have. Right, so it really is that, uh, adding observability is imperative for getting accurate cost analysis. 
And the continuous pay payoff for your organization really is that, hey, you know, you have actionable, real-time, accurate financial and operational planning, which really leads to cost, you know, cost optimization for your cloud spend. And in the long run, really, what every business is after is how do you reduce risk on, you know, financial planning so that, you know, you don't have to, you can sustain any kind of uh, changes in the economy, for example. So I want to kind of take this, you know, in the mode where I said, you know, there are multiple stakeholders in this game. It's not really only engineering. It's not only application development and developers, but it's also the CFO's office, often financial teams that are operating across the company. And what does the CFO's office come back and ask you about? What do they need as a systems engineering team, as a platform engineering team, as a you know, team that's operating infrastructure or developers who are building applications on the cloud? You really need to be very, very much you know, lockstep with the CFO's office. So if you were to come back to a systems engineering team and said, hey, you know, what do I need? I need this, these, this is the list of items I need from you at a minimum. One is telemetry data. Even though we have loads and loads of telemetry data, terabytes and petabytes, but sometimes it's not enough because it may not be the right type of data, right, that you need for cost analysis. So more granular data, more data for, uh, that supports streaming at scale uh, for real-time collection, correlation, and analysis on the fly. Right? Because that also gives you a lot of performance to be able to calculate cost and apply models and do a lot more pre-processing on, on, on the fly as you are doing collection. And what that then does is it also sets up the data to be e very easily consumable for intelligent analysis. And why do I say intelligent analysis and not just... Uh, regular observability analysis, you know, where you can do correlation or you can just do um, uh, sampling, for example, is that, yeah, that's fine, that's at a basic level, but then you actually do want to accelerate the speed of analysis that you want to do at scale, at uh, real time, and for that, typically, ML is used a lot. I do introduce a new buzzword here, but it's an old buzzword, actually, AI ops. Uh, also known as MLOps sometimes, for understanding reliability patterns. Now, we do this a fair bit in systems reliability, you know, where you are actually not only building your observability pipelines, but then you also have ML applied at scale to be able to understand reliability patterns, you know, errors, failures, analysis, you know, that really gives you the kind of trends in which your data, your applications are not only behaving, but also the patterns of usage across regions and different types of metrics that, and dimensions that you want to see. And that is something which is very useful for, you know, again, going and supporting financial planning. Because, in, you know, at observability, this is a different area. Data analysis also, where you are actually working with cloud providers, specific, you know, requirements. And these are, again you know, areas that systems engineering is not a only stakeholder on, could be capacity reservations, for example, right? Like one team that is doing reservations for capacity and working with cloud providers may know about that detail, but others, others may not. Developers may not when you're building an application. So that data along with, you know, other discount data, a cloud provider, you know, deals, et cetera, all needs to factor in into your into your analysis, because you really can apply that at the system scale, at the infrastructure scale, before it even goes into financial planning. And that's something that's super useful. And that's something that also needs to be part of the SLOs and SLAs that are committed to by cloud providers. Why do I call that out? Is because alert management, again, which is the next step of observability, if you will, in an observability life cycle. At the systems observability level, we often set alerts for understanding behavior of systems, right? For applications that we are looking at. But there also can be, you know, a whole range of budget alerts that you can set up for usage. 
And why that matters is because you want to be able to understand, you know, what, what is your infrastructure you know, utilize, being utilized for at any given point in time, real time. And you do want to set thresholds and be able to understand, you know, how that triggers in various regions, various resource types, various you know, applications, you know, and different dimensions. And that's something that's super important. The other aspect is also for these budget alerts, or this category alerts, you can actually surface that, that information to different stakeholders. So not only you know, systems engineering, platform engineering, operations, but also developers, you know, development teams, which are actually looking at how performant an application is going to be, and also your CFO's team, right? Your financial teams who are actually also working with you lockstep on supporting your needs for the business. And last but not least, you know, having these budgeting alerts will also convert into reporting with detailed analysis on the different types of trends, patterns, and the usage, not only at an application level, but also factoring in all these different parameters that, you know, some of which I called out. So it's, it's actually complicated because it's, you know, has its own uh, uh, data needs, if you will. And it is more and more intersecting with the same groups across organizations where it's not only good enough to understand, you know, setting up and designing large-scale infrastructure, but it's equally important to understand what the resource utilization and efficiencies will be. So at the end of the day, I just want to call out that, you know, there are different stakeholders in this whole equation, and they have to be at the table, sitting, and you know, when you're building out your infrastructure, then you need to be at the table at the same time, right? There has to be regular conversation, regular planning, systems, you know, all the way from day one when you actually start building your scalable applications as well as deploying them worldwide. So you have the functionality of engineering with the CTO here, you have the CFO with the financial offices, and you also have the operate, operating uh, teams from the business who are actually looking and working closely with the other teams to be able to do, uh, you know, to analyze and spec out your budgets. The other area that I do want to call out, which is actually a very important area, and this is kind of one of the takeaways that I'd like to you know, share, is that public cloud providers today do not provide the kind of detailed information that, and the detailed granularity of data that needed for, you know, really highly efficient usage data, right? And public cloud providers need to be able to provide that kind of granularity, that kind of customization, and the relevant data that is needed for applications and that, you know, and resource utilization. Uh, we are going into a very data-intensive age with AI. And many of you, you know, who may be looking at AI or, um, you know, thinking about applying it are definitely going into an age where we need to be more and more conscious about every single aspect of optimizing pipelines of infrastructure. It's not only CPUs anymore, it's not only memory usage, it's not only just storage, but it's a lot more than that. And that fabric, you know, really, really has to be optimized, has to have metrics and other data exposed so that you really have visibility from the public cloud providers for starters, as well as general system design uh, planning that needs to happen in order to provide that kind of data that you need for financial forecasting at scale. I'd also like to call out that the use of semantic conventions, which has been very popular and very well uh, uh, received in the observability community, especially in the open source projects within CNCF, where, for example, a lot of work on semantic conventions has been done for other kinds of parameters in open telemetry. Semantic conventions should be actually uh, defined by all the stakeholders at the table for cost observability metrics, for cost observability data, because that is a whole layer of data that you need above and beyond what the cloud providers or cloud infrastructure is surfacing today. 
That even goes back to, you know, how we think about Kubernetes and what Kubernetes itself is in orchestration uh, and environment is uh, exposing from the infrastructure. So using semantic convention for cost observability is an area which will become more and more important as we go forward. And not only engineers, but product managers, you know, operations, SRE, as well as financial product managers and analysts need to contribute in that whole process. Because once that is standardized, I'd really like to see the public cloud providers provide a consistent, interoperable way of being able to surface these metrics so that they can be used and, custom, you know, and don't need the kind of heavy lifting that is needed for cost analysis today. The other area that I'd like to see again, uh, and this goes back to APIs and using standardized APIs, is for instrumentation and collection of cost observability data, which needs to be first of all defined. And I think there's some work that is ongoing, but you know, I'd like to see more momentum behind that with specifically with some of the open source projects which are in the CNCF, but also a lot more standardized implementation across the larger projects, right? Like uh, there's cube cost, many of you are familiar with, and open cost. Um, but I think there's a lot more to be done there. And last but not least, leveraging you know, what I described as AI ops. So there are many different aspects of that, but standardization, not only from an analysis perspective, but using uh, new technologies, uh, such, as your, uh, such as LLMs, uh, to be able to actually um, use this at scale for accurate forecasting and being able to actually have a lot more definition on the kind of real-time analysis you need for getting back to your cost management and cloud cost management, right? So again, it's super important because we don't have, you know, the ability at some point or the other to be able to say, hey, you know, we're going to put in all this customized engineering to really get what we need. It is very important for the cloud providers actually to be interoperable and to provide the standardized set of um, metrics and other data, observability data that can be used very easily. All right. So with that said, I think uh, we covered a lot. You know, it's a big, big area, and I know we are at uh, at time almost. But I'd like to, you know, ask folks if they have questions. Um, I just wanted to reiterate that you know this is a very large area, but it's also a very fast moving area because the use cases for this uh, need are now, right? Like as we start building out a whole generation of new uh, intelligence systems and services, it really is very imperative to, you know, kind of make progress in this area. And it's exciting to see this intersect with observability. I do think that, you know, also more stakeholders need to be at the table. It's not enough for you know, us engineers to sit and do this. It's also important for the other stakeholders to actually come to the table and work with us. And last but not least, you know, really taking, uh, making these optimizations effective. Because I think that today there's a lot of hand-holding in the way that we do cost management. And that can be easily, easily you know, improved a lot. All right, so that said, uh, I'm done. Questions? Questions? Do folks have questions? One? Okay. We have time for one. What kind of tools do you use for uh, getting the cost monitoring data? Uh, because uh, some of the tools that we have does not uh, provide the detailed information. Do we have to invest in or from CNCF, are we trying to invest in a couple of these uh, cost monitoring tools? Yeah, I think, I think there's some amount of work. Uh, and again, the question is that, you know, there's not enough tool, tooling for cost management today. And the tooling that exists today is probably not as well developed as it could be. So are there other projects that are, you know, in the CNCF space that are looking at this? And how can we do more? And I would say that 
uh, I think we don't have enough projects being done, but however, I would also say that, you know, there are several interesting projects from the cloud providers, which actually can be pulled into the CNCF uh, and would actually help the everyone the utilize them. Uh, Carpenter from AWS is one of them. Uh, there are also other projects uh, which, you know, could actually benefit from being integrated into the CNCF. Any other questions? I think they're done. Thank you, everyone. Have a lovely day.